Hello everyone. Welcome to the lecture of Quality and Reliability Engineering. I am Milan Trivedi, Assistant Professor at LG Institute of Engineering and Technology. So from the past two lectures, we had got the understanding what is quality, why it is important to any of the industry. In today's lecture, we are going to elaborate this word that is quality gurus. Right? In the first look, it is very clear that guru is a Hindi word, right? But it is adopted by the Oxford Dictionary even in the US, UK. Also, we are having this word quality gurus. And there are certain gurus which were very famous due to their inputs into the quality side. We are going to learn about the different quality gurus and that is actually the last part of our first chapter. Now coming to this quality gurus part, there were various gurus who had given the best input to the society so that the there is a sudden improvement in the quality of most of the products. Basically the major inputs were given by the Americans, later on by the Japanese and lastly by the UK. From the American side, Crosby, Deming, Fajinbum, Juran and the Shining were very famous. The other gurus from the Japanese was Ishikawa, Shingo and Taguchi. And later on, when the British had also put the effort into the quality side, some of the famous gurus was Grocock, Hutchkins, Oakland, Price and Stabin. But the major input was from the American and the Japanese side. We are going to elaborate that, but before starting to that, let me give you one case study. Now this is a time about the Second World War. After the Second World War, what actually happened was, Especially after the attack of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the major economy of the Japanese was collapsed badly. They were not able to recover that actually loss they had uncovered during the World War time very easily. So most of the Japanese industry were facing a lot of problem just to synchronize the quality problem. right? So what happened was, just to stabilize the economy of Japan, who was actually converted into the ashes, right? They were using this word that Japan had totally converted into the ashes. But in order to recover that, America had done one good step during that time. They sent that two of the quality gurus, which I had listed in the American side, that this Deming, Edward Deming and Joseph Juran. They sent this quality gurus. They were actually not called as gurus at that time. They were just a professor at that time. They sent these two Americans to the Japan just in order to improve the quality of the product. And Japanese were very much influenced by the inputs they had given and they had adopted their philosophies into their industry. But just by implementing that philosophy, they had improved a lot during that 10 years time. And later on what happened, some of the Japanese gurus were also involved. They learned under the mentorship of American gurus and some of the Japanese guru which I had listed this Ishikawa and Taguchi, they had adopted new philosophy and given a very best input to the society. And right now the result of that can be seen. Japan is right now standing as the third largest economy of the world. Right? So, why it is possible because of the input into the quality side, right? And right now even the Toyota Motors, which is very famous and that is also famous due to this concept of the total quality management, right? But the concept of this quality management was initially given by the Joseph Juran and the Edward Deming, right? So in today's lecture, we are going to at least elaborate five quality gurus, right? As I told, there are a number of different quality gurus, but we are covering the best five quality gurus we ha who had given a major input into the quality side. First of all, we will start with the W. Edwards Deming, who won on 1900 and was demised on 1993. Was an actually American engineer, statistician, and the professor, lecturer, and the management consultant. He is actually famous for his 14 point quality management theory, seven deadly diseases. Uh, seven deadly diseases he named because there are certain mistakes which is done by the management and he named that as a disease, right? You need to prevent that disease in order to achieve the quality. Then he given the theory of variance, right? Variance means uh, uh, chances of variation, right? And that is always present in any of the industry. If you minimize that variance, you can actually improve the quality. That was the concept of that theory of variance. 
and the most popular thing which he had given was the pdca cycle we are going to learn about that pdca cycle later on in our next chapter but that is a plan do check act cycle right but right now let me just briefly cover that 14 points of the quality management even deming had also given the number of different definitions of quality also but one of the famous quote which he had given is defects are not free somebody makes them and gets paid for making them right now let me give you the different 14 points which were given by the deming first of all create the purpose for the improvement right why you need to actually improve the quality that vision must be clear in your mind second is the adoption of the new philosophy right we need to make the system flexible so that the different changes can be adopted easily the third one is the cease dependence on the inspection to achieve quality cease means to reduce the dependence on you on the inspection part most of the time all should be involved in order to achieve the better quality fourth that work with the supplier to reduce the cost we need to work with one supplier only so that we maintain a quality standard and it will actually reduce the variance that is its next theory right theory of variance the fifth quote that is continuous improvement even that is actually most of the time adopted by the japanese company when they are calling it as a kaizen right that is nothing but it is a continuous improvement the sixth quote that is the on job training training is must in order to achieve better quality seventh one was about the leadership take a lead to improve the quality eighth one that drive out fear that you will feel just by implementing this step that fear should be driven out and that is possible just by the training the staff ninth that break down the silos right most of the time whenever problem is there you need to break down and identify that where does the problem is tenth that there should not be slogans right most of the time in the earlier days it was happening that people were started writing the slogans just to uh, just uh, having a interruption in the quality part right but that should not be there 11th no quotas or numerical goals we should have a standards but that should not be kind of a numerical goals right because most of the time in the earlier days it was happening that uh, company used to set the production goals we need to have this one lakh products during one month of time right if you set that kind of goals most of the time you are actually compromising with the quality so the quality must always comes first that was is again a new slogan so 12th one that remove annual ratings or merit system that is uh, given to the hr part so that people don't compromise with the quality 13th that institute education and self improvement programs must be there that should be a proper training 14 that involve all workers in the transformation each and every person who is doing the task must be involved and focused on the quality the second quality guru he is also called as the father of quality control and that is a joseph juran again he was also sent to the japan to improve the quality standard right and he is a american engineer and management consultant and very much famous for his theory that is juran's triology as we know tri means three so he had given the three basic principles that is quality planning quality control and the quality improvement right how to achieve the quality planning or how to plan the quality we need to identify the customer we need to determine that what is the need of the customer we need to develop the product features according to the need of the customer we need to establish the quality goals that this is the final quality we need to achieve then we need to develop a process to reduce the needed product features we need to prove process capabilities that can meet the quality goals right so this were the some of the part which was coming under the quality planning what is quality control or how to have a control on the quality then for that you need to choose the control subject right means control subject means where does that problem is you need to have a look on that and as per that that is nothing but as per that subject you need to work on to improve the quality and choose the unit of measurement establish the measurement that how you measure the quality now that can be a uh, having a different different perspective that how you measure the quality right um, then 
you need to have established standards of the performance measure actual performance just to have a better comparison interpret the difference that what you want to achieve and what you have achieved just compare that to scenario in order to improve the quality take action on the difference right and lastly that the third part of trialogy that is quality improvement that prove the need for the improvement identify specific projects for improvement organize to guide the projects organize for the diagnosis for recovery of the causes or discovery of the causes provide remedies prove that remedies are effective under the certain conditions provide for control to hold the gains so these were the some of the perspective given by the juran later on ishikawa again a japanese guru who had actually got trained from the americans and he developed this cause and effect diagram a very famous diagram from the ishikawa this diagram is also called as a cause and effect diagram sometimes it is called as a fish bone diagram because the appearance of this diagram is like a fish bone right this is a neck bone and these are the different uh, uh, bones attached with that neck bone so it appears like a fish bone and as it is given by ishikawa it is also identified as a ishikawa diagram but the major part of this cause and effect diagram is just a representation of different causes and effect on one particular diagram so here there is a indication that this kind of causes are possible in the product right if you going going to manufacture some thing then these are the different possibilities which can happen and because of the different possibilities we can have this effect so that is nothing but cause and effect diagram let me give you one example so that you can get a idea right if you are going to manufacture one shaft then it can have a different different diameters but who will be responsible for that different different diameters then for that we can have a responsibilities of different material measurement machine employ environment method so these are the different cause right and what can be there in that cause is represented by these arrow lines right for material then specific hardness if too high then the chemistry of material then if you are measuring something then calipers are not capable then machine machine may give a wrong speed wrong feed rate so for that a defective shaft may be generated right if employees are working in order to produce that that employee may be an inexperienced or untrained the environment in which the product has been manufactured that environment may be too hot too cold or insufficient lighting may be there then the method may be wrong right so these are the different causes which can result into this particular effect right so it is a actually easy representation of all the problems on one particular page and so that you can get a better idea to work on the next guru that is a taguchi again you know, one of the famous guru who had given a best input in the optimization side also his contribution are mainly in this side taguchi method that is a methodology to improve quality and reduce cost then the loss function one of the uh, best input given by the taguchi that is a loss function about that also we are going to learn in the next chapter itself then the robust design principle which focus on improving the fundamental function of the product or process lastly we are going to learn about the fejenbaum right so he has having these three steps to quality his philosophy include he is also an american quality guru he focused on the quality leadership that management should take a lead to improve the quality then the management quality technology had given that the traditional programs should be replaced by the latest quality technology just to satisfy the need of the customer and the third one that is organizational commitment should be on the quality also right for that you may motivate and continuous train your employees right so these were the principles which are given by the fejenbaum that's all for the today's lecture and our first chapter thanks